anyway because <laughs> it is though right like he hits you with all these different things and he gets things done that you don't expect and then sometimes you're like heads and the guy's like yeah but you had to roll a three or more and he's like oh no and it doesn't work out for him because that works as well yeah. it's not always successful it's a little bit of everything it certainly is and that has succeeded uh, so far for him again he's safe here to advance but then can he get another five hundred dollars in his pockets and ruin yet another dream by actually taking a two zero or two one here now we had a pull first from shin but he didn't do anything particularly aggressive with it wasn't a gas wasn't a proxy hatch we did see one already but rather uh, even just defensive because he didn't even really make that many links literally just two they are going to be a bit of a bother. The Marine, I believe, is out. Yes, indeed it is. And one Marine, uh, especially with an SV pool, yeah, will have no trouble dealing with this. But that little blip there is kind of nice. That would be even nicer is if Shin does not take any drone damage to this Reaper, which he just did. Yep, first drone already going down as this Reaper hops down, now hops back up. Another drone coming across. And we just have this Reaper again pushed away. The Queen there will shove that out. Couple of CCs on the way up from Oliveira. He's very ready to play that macro, but just already off to the nice little start. Dealing with this all nicely. And, well, Shin obviously on his way to that third hatchery as well. As he does not quite know what's going on. He doesn't quite know about the three CC. Now Oliver is just accelerating on towards. Shin does have a very forward-placed Overlord, a kind of trickier spot, I suppose. It won't see the Hellions or whatever it is coming out of the natural, for instance, but it can get kind of a cheeky scout into the main from a different direction than the Terran might expect. So ideally, it scouts the third CC, but then also scouts the factory or starport timing. Is it a second factory? Is it Cyclones popping out, which currently it is? And uh, obviously, is it Stim or not as well? Oliver not particularly into the mech, but I mean, we have seen some people try and experiment with it, certainly Gumiho. But yeah, there is the Stim. So a couple Cyclones could bop a differently placed Overlord. Not going to find it here. They might want to wait for the Hellions if they really want to get aggressive. Speed is close to finishing for Shin. Yep, link speed a moment or two away. The few extra links popping out. And our Cyclones will take the watch to have a little duel over this watchtower. It's so interesting how much this watchtower has been contested because of those little choke points in. As we do have our Reaper showing up. And the Rotron coming through tells us a bit about what Shin wants to have going for himself in the mid stages of this game. As we have our Queens trying to fight the defense, the Lings get from the back though. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be cash. very good at all. It's exactly what you want to wait for the Hellions. Obviously, that was just a really well set up catch on the Ling surround. Seeing Shin go for this Rotorn, no evolution chambers, and not that many drones. I am getting some hints of an attack. Some uh, attack is shown actually in many of his other ZVTs, and they have been effective. They'll be doubly effective when Oliveira has left less units, and even more effective than that, when less units means less scouting. Oliveira needs to be wary of potential all-in, because this is the exact circumstance that it would kill him. Worst case scenario for being up against an all-in, you've just lost all of your information on the map, the first Cyclones go down, this could not be better for Shin, quite frankly. Oliveira has no idea about what is coming. And even if he blindly sets up a defense, you're right, unit count is going to become a problem from right here. Shin is going to do what he did against Clem in their series as well, which is just show up with a bunch of roaches, a bunch of lings, and look for that early game kill. Exactly, and Oliveira is not going to have very much to defend it, even less with the losses on the front line. No bunker, no hellbats, as that armory that is quicker than normal just simply will not be done. And even then, Hellbats might not be enough to help out. The Marines move forward and see, well, certain death, basically. They race backward to try and stop being surrounded. But is that going to be enough? SCVs do get pulled. Oliveira going to make the stand, or at least try to. And the wall does come up a little bit more extra time. But this is still really scary for the Terran. All those depots lead to a supply block right now. We have Marines are waiting for their chance to get going again. Shin just wants to open up this front door. He's got a lot more lings on the way, as many ravages as possible. Let's see what he can do. Those Hellbats obviously going to be nice and annoying because they are going to stop you from wanting to send those Zerglings in for a little bit. So it's going to slow Shin down. And of course, time is of 
Fairer's friend. The more units he gets out, the better off this may be. Another set of corrosive vials here, just trying to make those Hellbats stay the heck away. It is actually really nice to officially get to those Hellbats. I mean, this is something that Oliveira does do, the slightly quicker armory, and this is helping him potentially hold this all in, but the Lings do eventually get that surround, and just too many units right there. Oliveira forced to flee with the remaining Marines. A Liberator that won't really help as the Ravagers can three-shot that, and Oliveira's supply is dipping down hard, already losing 24 SCVs. If he somehow managed to make a hold happen right here, there's some recovery hope, but even that's not necessarily guaranteed, as it is literally one, no, now two Marines against the leftovers of Shin's army. It looks like Shin is going to back away from doubling down or tripling down on the aggression, even a little Miss Riley drone right there, but Oliveira has a lot to come back. Yeah, that, that was rough. In the end, Shin found the surround on those Marines with the Lings, which really enabled the Ravagers to just get in there and fight. Um, he had a moment where maybe he bailed a little bit too early. The Liberator Siege killed off a couple of Ravagers. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have gone even more done. At the end of the day, he did start drawing behind it. Otherwise, he probably would have won the game flooding Lings. Now he's likely to win the game off of just an extremely economic, you know, extreme economic advantage. Uh, Oliveira just finished armor upgrade, no attack upgrade. That forward engineering bay went down. You can list the problems here for Oliveira. And yeah, Shin, okay, he doesn't have a lair yet. He's not got the fourth hatchery. This weighs back in for Oliveira, perhaps, but it is an uphill battle. This is almost exactly where it is possible, basically, right? So I, I have to say, if you're on 3CC, 30 SEV kills from that type of attack basically does the Terran in. Anything less, even if it's literally 29 or 28. And there's a certain amount of wiggle room. Do you have the better upgrades? Do you have the superior multitasking since you have medivacs and stem to be able to run around and uh the answer is kind of yes to both of those things but it is only one upgrade not one one at the very least and not the upgrade you would want as a terran player either but there is still hope for Oliveira. it is just a huge hill to climb he has so much to do before he officially makes the comeback happen and shin might just be going for basically a follow-up attack with one one roach which Oliveira will absolutely have trouble holding as well that's what i was about to point out is like yeah he's getting those upgrades up it looks like we're back into unit production after saturating three bases He's just going to make a lot of units and really take away the options for Oliveira to get back into the game. The upgrades are going to be even for a little while during that, and it just means you can go for one big attack. Even if there's a tank or two, you can knock those down. It's difficult for Oliveira to get enough units out to realistically defend this big Roach Ravager force. Yep, yep, yep. Actually, grabbing a fairly fast forth for the context of this game. And uh, obviously, if he does have to pull SEVs again to defend this incoming Roach Flood, then he has, uh, you know, a few to lose. He's actually recovered the workers, especially as Shin has stopped droning, but because he is going for an all-in here. And uh, Oliveira, he knows about it. He's got a little Sim City. He's trying to get that plus one upgrade to finish, but he just lost on the medevac, which is not the greatest start. And that Sim City is going to have to hold for a long time to actually allow these two tanks to hold against the flood of units. We do have them breaking down pretty quickly, but Oliveira about as well set up as he possibly can be in the situation. Yeah, you see Shin just poking, prodding, figuring out what the best direction of attack is. Probably wants to bow down this bunker before he truly commits through. As he is ready. I mean, he's getting closer and closer to being maxed out. The longer he waits, generally the better it is for the Terran, because, you know, more siege tank is generally good. He does find that bunker. Yeah, but that third tank actually in the natural was a real bother. I didn't see that one. That is a nice position. Tank line, but is it going to be enough? Bio with 1-1. One, one. Roach Ravager with 1-1. One, one. Three tanks still firing away. One goes down, but two lives. The SCDs do get pulled. Is it too late or is it perfectly timed? Seems to be the latter as that second tank also survived and the Ravagers are found vulnerable. Oliveira, eager not to chase too much, does fall back to the safe position. Would love to see the repair on the tanks first, then the medevacs, as Oliveira is starting to really make a believer in me at the very least. Shin, only 40, 50 supply ahead? Like, that's actually not the most competent or uh, comfortable, I should say, Zerg lead. That Oliveira did just taste a little too forward right there. Yeah, the only downside I see for Oliveira is his medevacs are super drained of energy, so healing is yeah. going to start becoming a problem potentially, and Shin is ready to go for another round of this. He really missed the bows on those siege tanks. They lived for so long in that previous fight. That one in the natural surviving, that was the first to get bowed, and it never went down. It got so many shots off. Let's see if he's got enough firepower this time around. This time the corrosive bows come down. We do hit three on that tank immediately. That's much better, much cleaner from Shin. That's what he needs to ruin Oliveira's first game. Oliveira now has an upgrade lead, by the way, guys. Plus two armor, so again, not the preferable upgrade 
it's a half, but it's better than nothing when Shin is still also on 1-1. One, one. It is a 60 supply lead for the Zerg, but finding the correct angle here has been difficult. Tank found on Siege. No second tank to help out, although now the Roach Ravager is a little clumped up. And once again, he misses the corrosive biles on the tank, but some do hit the medevac. More Zerg units coming in here, but second tank pops forward. More reinforcements from the Terran on the way. 24 SCVs have been sacrificed into this hold, and now it is becoming a huge problem. Third CC has to be lifted. Oliveira has actually snuck a fourth command center down to the bottom right, surprisingly enough, but I'm not sure that's going to be it, as Oliveira's army supply just doesn't look strong enough to actually break out here, meaning that Shin has once again found a position where he's done enough damage to be a head, but not quite to end the game, perhaps. It's going to be a little bit interesting because you don't really want to dive into this, although it is just one siege tank. If you are down on upgrades as well, that's another kind of saving grace for Oliveira here as he tries to hold on at 6 o'clock base. Even if you just mule that location, save some minerals on your other positions, uh, you see Oliveira with the scan. He's like, how dead am I? Do you have that yeah. base saturated? And yes, he does. And now Shin realizing as well, hey, what if I just pop down the bay nest, the infestation bay? Let's just guarantee I can improve my composition and really get to this next and final stage of this game. Can't believe he whiffed the biles on that tank. Yeah, yeah, that's three, <laughs> more than three bile attempts, but like three phases of bile attempts that went poorly. And and I think that actually would have been enough to straight up win the game. Now it is once again a little bit of a question mark because Shin also is not aware of the fourth CC. I don't think he actually even scouted it being built. Yeah. Which, you know, means that he's not going to... Oh, they definitely scouted that's it being built. Yeah. No, that is the third. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's an orbital, obviously, yeah. So he actually has no idea. He's not even gonna bother checking. Now, he might accidentally check with a couple of overlords, and I'm not even sure purposefully rallied. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what these guys are off to. It's the, the dastardly scouting duo, and they are gonna show up and uh, be like, ah, there's a base over here. So they do uh, succeed, and they're gonna turn away immediately upon realizing. Oh. As uh, we back away, Shin's giggling to himself. Yeah, he's like, oh shoot, that's happening all this time? Because if he had known about it, that might have been an easy bot, but it is might have because the minerals were up. Like that was why it was especially sneaky. This map potentially being the reason that Oliveira brings this back because securing a fourth as a planetary, as you actually have the breathing room to get your SCV count up, to get the saturation, is just so wildly different from the expectation that Shin had. Absolutely, Shin continues out across the bottom left-hand side once again here. The Medivac just scouting, trying to figure out what is going on. We're moments away from a big set of upgrades, right? Baneling speed and so on. We're also getting the Hive and the Hydrogen on the way up too. I do wonder what Shin thinks about that bottom base. It wasn't really mining until just when he scouted it. So if he sees that, he's like, oh, this was mining the whole time. That could be a bit of a misread on the position because then he might really think, oh, you're in a really good spot. True. But Oliveira is more so in like a, an okay spot. So that could change whether you decide to attack or not again. I do think that is vastly different expectations. Um, but I think both still lead to the current situation, which is that both maxed out. Terran 4 base, Zerg 5, 6, whatever he's going to get to. It's a game, man. It is. Like, it has been equalized. Anyone can win from here on out. And now the question is, who is that better mid to late game player? And I do kind of want to go with Oliveira, but here's the thing. I've constantly been a bit of a doubter as far as Shin goes, as far as his series scores, his map scores, his possibility of advancing, and he absolutely proves me wrong every single time. So, yeah, I say late game goes to Oliveira, but we'll see what Shin has to show. Oliver pushing in that hatchery, taking some damage. We are going to see the Link Bay and Roach Ravager just trying to hold on. This hatchery is extremely low. Attack on the top left on the same time. On the picture in picture, and a bunch of Ravagers going down. Oh. Yes, Oliver taking some fights as we are somehow taking this fight. Shin on the right side, though, he is able to get through with the blinding clouds across those tanks. They finally get free, but we bile them down, and Oliveira has plummeted in the supply count. Yeah, I thought the Vipers going down there was a big mistake, but the, the job was done. Just the blinding well clouds were slapped down, and Oliver era did i think underestimate just how much we're behind the initial wave uh, of attacks right there right so he stayed play in place when maybe an early evacuation would have been wiser now that might not be enough to again kill him which seems to be shin's problem right now is like i'm ahead i'm ahead just die already but it is uh, obviously a situation in which now we once again like heavily favor shin it's you know it's a Great sign for the Zerg player to be in the economic position with the technology and then also take the fights the way that he does. But Oliver is not done yet. Next time he does move across the map, he'll even have a better position, more splash units, better upgrades as well. 
And he is on the recovery path to maxing out again. And Liv just gonna fire over the Overlord a couple more times. He got this Liv getting pushed away. Nice little bit of harassment, right? Anything adds up, especially if you want to keep Shin back a few moments, regroup your units, get a few more units on the field. That has been the aim for Oliveira as he also presses towards this gold base. I do wonder if the non-immediate counterattack was maybe a little bit to what you're talking about, his expectation that there is a lot more behind it. There, uh, there was a heavy dip in supply. Now, even that, of course, every Zerg player has thought that they've got a chance to counterattack and a planetary with Master Pair does hold, so... I uh, totally understand Shin's position, but now he has that confidence. Viper's back in a play with energy to go after Oliveira. Oliveira's supply not quite maxed out. Blinding Cloud on top of the bio pushes them forward into the Banelings. A last second split's gonna try and help. A little Sim City as well for the Terran player to work around. And that planetary is just not going to hold. It goes down and Oliveira is forced to flee with the remain of it, remaining parts of his army, which is just not a lot. This is a really good moment for Shin because he's denying the gold base from coming up. He knocked down the fourth as well. These are big hits to Oliveira's economy, and these are hits which he does not recover from as quickly as Shin does. This is where Shin can rebuild, go again, and absolutely be secure. He's even adding some Hydras on as well as he tries to escape away. Might lose a couple more Ravages in the process, although he mostly has the jump to get out of there. We're going to turn around once again. The bio four is going to turn away. Shin looking more and more comfortable here in this game one, but man, has it been such an effort after that early lead. He's tried five times to yeah. actually get Oliveira to tap out of this game, and Oliveira absolutely refuses, but now in the worst state yet, down 90 supply, technically with an upgrade lead, I suppose, but when you're down 60 army supply, I'm not sure that really matters. Go's not going to really impact this up coming battle, perhaps the last battle as it is in full swing now, and that is finally it. <laughs> yeah, Shin just uh, probably thinking the same thing, like, man, that took forever to kill the guy. It really, really did. He's gonna, I think, look through your replay quickly or something, because he's probably like, man, what? Why? Like, how, <laughs> like, what did, what went wrong? And it really was, he just whiffed the Biles and the tanks. The first fight, it should have been over, right? Like, not this one, but the first fight after this, it should have just been, you'd buff the tiles, you buff the tanks down, there's not really a defense there, but this tank on the left side, it survives. Only two battles on it. He didn't use any other battles on the tanks. He does here in the middle, and that tank goes down. That's the only tank to fall, and he's battling now as though he just forgot this tank on the left lift, and then he battled the right tank, and it yes. didn't die. Yeah. And then here as well, he missed a tank. Yeah, most likely he had a third cross of bile set up, but it was like, you know, one of the first things to die. Yeah, it just dies as if just before it fires. Exactly, yeah. so it does happen, but to have it happen three times, like that that was where you're like, well, maybe also it, it you know, he's a little off perhaps in his placement. But obviously Shin has done enough damage repeatedly to be in the lead, and then it was just about not throwing away his lead. He absolutely did not. A little bit of confusion perhaps about the actual situation also did give Oliveira more of a chance but Oliveira, let's talk about it. The first mistake was losing all those units. Not yes. because they had more potential as aggression, which technically they did, but purely because they were the scouting. Like that was that that is like the worst thing you can do against a guy like Shin. No, you, you, it just opened Shin's attack up so much. Like this really was, and even then it was a pretty good defense for a while. Like he held it off for a little bit and just about as Shin was giving up on the idea, the Lings got in for the wraparound and it just was enough to then cause chaos in the mineral lines as well. And that obviously led to Shin eventually taking that 1-0 lead. Just before we dive into game number two, there's obviously a lot of important matches going on. Bunny and Clem currently playing on the B stream, currently 20 minutes in game ZG. Clem was down about 70 supply. He's about to even it up, still behind. That's still game one, and that's super important for this group. Yes, it is. Oh, man, it is getting very close here in group B. In the bottom left for Mystery Gaming, now up 1-0. He is the Red Zerg, Shin. And the top right, our blue Terran player, this from Dragon Kaiser Gaming, our reigning world champion, is Oliveira. You can just see the pressure getting to him after that game. Head in his hands, uh, absolutely aware of the mistakes that he made. And the thing is, it really was still subsequent mistakes that, that really did him in by that. I mean, yeah, he lost the scouting. He lost a little bit of pressure that he had. But then it was the exact time that he moves out with his Marines that the attack was incoming. Like, if he had had the wall to begin with, that also changes things drastically. So the pressure continues to mount as he also does have to worry about the results uh, from the second series going on. Also, a third one should be happening. If Group A is done anyway. 
think it's confirmation on that. Oliveira, not gonna be the one that usually go for a proxy two racks or anything, but she yeah. really likes the pool first against Taren, yeah. I guess. Just pool first and it up, I guess, likes the options it gives him perhaps. And uh, in this case, we're still even waiting to see a gas come down. It's a pool first hatch and then no gas at all for a little bit. And this time you see six lings being made, so that little bit of aggression on this pool first. Yeah, I mean, he did manage to get the two lings in last game successfully across the map, and then it was a bit of a bother for Oliveira. A successful delay, yeah, successful delay on the command center and the kill on the SCV. But this is a nice addition for Oliveira. SCV scouting is going to be worth it, I think, against a, a guy as aggressive as Shin. And while Shin has proven to be good in all stages of the matchup, it still is something that I think is absolutely worth it because it does hit your economy a little bit, but you can see now it hits it less as getting his command center delayed significantly because the Reaper's not at home. Yep, no, absolutely. So Reaper just chilling. It's going to be happy to be there. And we just get ourselves that hatchery finished. Feeling still going to try and make their way across the map. And we just got the factory down from Oliveira as well. Eon Solaris for this map number two. Anything you'd like to see build wise? From Oliveira? Yeah. I mean, I actually wouldn't mind him doing the exact same build, honestly. Like, I know it gives him some vulnerabilities, especially if he loses the opening units. A Banshee would make you feel a lot safer versus a guy like Shin. But again, say that he is a little more cautious about the Marines or doesn't use the first units and actually scouts what's going on. The amount of Marines that he had with Hellbats, not Hellenes initially, comfortably ready to go, would deflect, I think, that same attack in an ideal scenario. It's not 100%. But then he also would get into a place where if it's not Shin attacking him, he gets to do his build order. His fast Hellbats with the Marines have really bopped Zergs. Like it is, to yeah. me, a very Oliveira thing because I feel like he was the first one doing it. That's probably not true, but maybe first consistent one to do it. And some Zergs really do get tripped up by those 16 Marines having the Hellbat support. Because you, you think you can deal with 16 Marines, but then the Hellbats take away that, def that defense of the Lings, and mm -hmm. it just becomes so much complicated. A little bit of tankiness to your Marines can go such a long way, depending on the unit comp of the Zerg. As the Reaper comes around the left, just confirms there is, in fact, a third hatchery there already, so just making sure everything in the early moments are standard. I'm gonna go Cloak Banshee straight away this time. Oliveira's like, well, if you do try anything, yeah. Rochi, I'm gonna be ready no matter what. You really can't blame the guy, right? <laughs> like, oh. And it's not like Alien Banshee is a significantly worse build than the 3cc. Uh, faster, you know, he's still gonna get a third cc. But, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's likelihood of getting damage is a bit less as far as the Banshee harass, although maybe Shin has shown some vulnerabilities to that type of harassment. I also really like that this is just straight into Hellions. This is totally a ZG biased opinion, and I'm wrong because the Terrans do it and they're much better than I am. But that Cyclone opener seems to suck every time I see it. The two Cyclone and the two Hellion always gets surrounded and always gets bopped. It's like the moment Link Speed is just like, well, Cyclones just suck again, right? Like, just in that early game, and yeah, I'm with you. They're just a little bit too slow moving to, like, comfortably move around with against Zerg, who is such a mobile race that can do so much with so little with good positioning, right? Yeah. The Link Speed lets you do that. And if you're like, well, I'm taking advantage of maybe a later Link Speed, which Shin has done in this game, it's like, well, you could also do that, you know, with, with Hellanes in a different way. So, uh, again, there are benefits going for that Cyclone opener. But um, I, I, I preface this with saying it's just my opinion, man. But uh, I, I do like this a lot better. The combination of Banshee Hellion might show some type of weakness from Shin as far as that perfect defense that we would absolutely expect from a Seril or Rainer, but maybe no. not from Shin as those drones are found a little vulnerable. Perfect timing. There it is. Feels like justice for Oliveira. He does lose all of the Hellions for it before 14 drones and basically a safe game behind behind this, I like it. What a what a sad moment for Shin because he kind of saw it coming, he pulled the drones away and just didn't matter because he had nothing there to stop it. His links took a moment or two to come across and that was just very costly. 14 drones, obviously you can't do anything with these links right now, so the fact he has more army supply currently does not matter. It's all about work count and he's quickly rebuilding those drones, but it is that lack of economy for a little while that then gives the Terran pushes at first that little bit more spring in their step 
and a little bit more spring in your step can very quickly become a snowball effect. Yeah, absolutely. Oliveira needing that, I think, just to give himself that confidence back too. Still has the two Banshees alive and also has scouted this is not going to be an all-in. Obviously, the worst thing would have been if he had already been trying to take his third CC on location. Then those lings would have gotten in. Would have been a disaster, but Terrans are pretty good about not, uh, not doing that if they know they're going to not have Hellions. Although, well, yeah, okay, yeah. So basically, there's that moment of time where your Marine Count's not quite high enough. Well, they are high enough. It's just not uh, in place. So quick stim, quick recovery on the third base. One Banshee did unfortunately go down. But as far as what you need in the early game harassment, he's got from the Hellions. And then as far as a little bit of scouting and a little bit of defense, that one Banshee still helps out a lot. Yeah, no, the ban Banshee is just so good to have throughout, right? I mean, they can find so many uses for themselves. It is really great to have them. You see Shin obviously playing very differently with the straight to Hydra Den off the back of Ling Bane. So just going to move him towards Ling Bane Hydra. We'll see how quick he wants to maybe try and get towards Lurkus. But obviously for the moment, Ling Bane Hydra, different comp, very active comp. We'll see what we can do with it. Is that Armory just a tad late for Oliveira for the 2-2 to start up cleanly? Yeah, just a little bit there. But only a five worker difference feels pretty good looking for the Terran's perspective. Now Shin is building more drones. He's getting to four bases. Creep is looking decent. It is covering his bases as much as you would you would hope. But oh, oh Bailey, Bailey run by. It is a slow one. And the Banshee did just position itself around that third for kind of specifically things like that. Actually having a lot more success against pure bailing than, for instance, double the amount of lings there. So good defense. And now a drop into the main base for Oliveira. Actually a decent amount of Widow Mines. So those lings have to be careful. The Marines are going to skedaddle. And the Widow Mines don't pop too aggressively. A little distraction too, though, as Oliveira still is an attack to the top north. But not going to find too much. Just a couple of freebie banelings. He's just getting little bits, though, right? He gets in with the Widow Mines, gets a few lings, a couple of banes top left-hand side. It all bigs, you know, builds up to that bigger picture of, hey, you know, can Oliveira have a larger push here that can be somewhat successful? As we're going to find out soon. I mean, 2-2 just started up for him here. Second factory's on the way, so you can see the intentions that he has just to kind of get into those extra kind of uh, factory units and to really tech up a little further. And then I was going to say that typically is accompanied by the fourth base. It just gets plonked down right now as well. So we are going to continue to move towards the macro game, but he has got a larger force in the center than what we've seen before. Kind of a scary one. There's nothing currently deflecting it, so it will be able to clean up all of that creep. And the amount of creep just kind of on the bottom half of the map is now getting very, very low. Top side, Marines still trying to bust through that queen defense that's mostly helping there. Not going to find success. Little hatchery. I think that was a cancel uh, in the Rich Vespi and Geyser, but eventually taken back. Yeah, it was a cancel. So. Shinna taking too much damage and now more comfortably on a higher drone count. But Oliveira really about to get into his groove. The action-packed multitasking of the Marine forces might catch Shin off guard if he's not careful. Yep, and uh, we saw Oliveira in the last game really played very well once the game kind of settled a little bit. So we'll see if he can maybe, you know, outsmart Shin, outspeed Shin a little bit. We do have these wooden mines have already gone off. So Shin can push back up over here. Oliveira just again with units everywhere. And that kind of previous attempt at the bailing run by, hope we see more of that because that's really going to be what slows the Terran down and sometimes gives you the bit of momentum and freedom on the map as a Zerg. So this is a Zerg that also has just very little creep spread. Yeah, now it, it really is getting concerning because it wasn't, you know, super impressive to begin with, but now it's not even being replaced after being completely stopped. That's maybe a problem in the near future. SCVs being caught, uh, unfortunately, as Oliveira does plan to take the fourth base, but the attention is almost entirely on the front lines, making sure you don't mess up against the massive amount of bailings that Shin has. And again, Shin is the type of Zerg player that would take this position in which a lot of other Zergs would defend, would pull back like he is doing, and choose to just continue forward. But it definitely would be wiser to pull back as that is quite a few Marines from Oliveira, and they will actually be able to take down a lot of Lings before finally escaping. Now all the upgrades also completing for both parties. Oliveira very quickly on top of his plus three attack. Shin still waiting for the infestation pit, still waiting for the hive. Obviously falls drastically behind against the 3-3 three, three Terran. Yeah, the, the upgrades do typically get to the Terran's favor for a little while at this stage. So that'll be an important factor. As we'll see Shin still just very much on Ling Bane Hydra, not really 
ready for that next step yet, but is set up to start moving there. We have the Hydras now shutting down some Medivacs, which is nice. Anything you can do to stop the Terran multi-pronging you and just being everywhere is going to be good. Yeah, nice snipe on the full Medivac too. And Shayna at least has been trying to recover the creep spread to the north, where most of the action has been. It's just the south now is kind of blind. If Oliveira did manage to sneak a 16 Marine, you know, run by basically, unload them and then run. But Shane is finally ready to be aggressive, and this is where he shines. Oliveira knows it's on the way, has plenty of army now coming over. We'll obviously have to sacrifice the depots and temporarily lose the economy, but high ground choke tanks it up. Oh, well, third CC also goes down, and that is the biggest bomber. Oliveira going to be looking for a better fight thanks to that, and is indeed looking for it. Banelings get taken down, and Hydra's left all alone. Yeah, Hydra's are not fun years to be kind of running away with because they're not the quickest uh, of the bunch when it comes to the Zerg army. We get back to that creep. This is pretty much the only creep on the map that is really outside of the bases, so it's one of the very few safe havens for Shin. He gets back to it there. Massive supply block for Oliveira, and that's concerning. If Shin builds up and goes again, Oliveira's not really added anything to his army due to the supply block as these mines just littered around the map. A big problem! Oh. And that's a good connection on some Balings there. We even use Balings to clean it up, which is even more painful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was really nice. Also, a little bit of scouting as Oliveira actually pushing from this point. And this is very tricky for a Terran player who has taken some losses, obviously, to the economy, sure. But then even then traded out on the bio. Shin might have already remaxed. You just aren't quite sure. And you know that there's creep spread to get through as well before you really start to interfere with their economy. But this might just be the confident move that Oliveira needs to show. Taking a place outside of creep, all of his siege units set up, and then just kind of continuing to tap here on this base. Shin is looking to get maybe a run by into the natural, if anything. Planetary obviously will stop Lings. And just a distraction as well, as he is getting set up into that hive technology. Vipers are on the way. Will be crucial to the defense if Oliveira is able to rally and continue pushing here. This is just such a good run by just so many SCVs for very few links that get out and they can come back again later. Oliveira is going to really, like you say, have to rally behind this push at the moment, right? We've got these Infestors and Vipers coming up, but they are not ready yet. This is where Oliveira can absolutely stack a position. Shin just keeps on saying, yeah, let's counterattack, right? He's going to go around that bottom right, or that could be the flank in, depending on what he wants to do. I think he's going to continue for the counterattack. That's so many of his banelings over here, ZG. Yeah, but Oliveira is not really... Uh, he's not engaging so much on this. He is doing the slow push, which Shin seems to be comfortable with. He is forced to let that base go, but now all of these banelings will find that planetary success the SCVs as well, and a cancel on a new base, so I would say it is 100% worth it. Shin actually displaying a lot of confidence and patience. We see him as an aggressive player, sometimes a little too overeager, but in this TVZ, he has shown really good form. The Vipers do once again get uh, sniped, but they got a couple of spells down, and the Liberators will simply not be enough to hold the line. Oliveira forced to flee back to his tanks. Yeah, ran right away there. The units from the right side came back to help for Shin. Just a little bit. It was expensive still at the very end. The Vipers obviously going down there. We're really haphazard with their cast. And I think like a panic blinding cloud went down in the corner that didn't do much at all. Yeah. But um, yeah, just having to replace those. That means the tanks may have a little bit more power for a while. You see Oliveira trying to re-expand on the fourth on location. That's going to get cancelled immediately as Shin is over there. So he's not slowing down. He says, right, I'm not going to let you step back up on this position. Even trying to long distance mine. And that is the trouble that Oliveira is being pushed into. He feels like he needs to do these things. So if Shin can keep stopping him, it's really going to get more than desperate here. Oh. Oliveira is actually a Terran who's kind of accustomed to these scenarios, which is effectively an all-in. He might be on three orbitals technically, but the economy does not sh truly show it. Fungal on top of the medivacs, but a really nice concave of bio anchored by these tanks is still a threat to Shin's natural. The Lings have put Oliveira down to a two-base economy, but if Oliveira's army can actually get into the production line of Shin, there's still a little bit of hope. Oliveira is still up 20 army so Supply. Upgrade's not quite done for Shin. Plus three Carapace will finish as he tries to take this on. Landing clouds go all across the tanks, but there's a couple on the bottom side that do not get covered. The few Hydras need to close in on the distance, get something done. We throw one final fungal into the center as Shin tries to get rid of everything. There's still two tanks, and they're doing so much with extra Marines showing up as well. Oliveira will come through, and Shin needs a few moments, but he may not get them. 
them. A Hydra that gets misrallied forwards and a base that will likely go down. And Oliveira is going to tighten the chokehold on the natural. Shin had never replaced that base in the top center. He is long distance mining from that and not being able to break a Terran who still has bio, who still has some reinforcements, and who still has tanks. When you are now out of Banelings and relying purely on Hydra, and there's no Banelings us either. Like, that is a terrible position to be in. Oliveira with the all in might once again hold on here, keep his chances of continuing Katowice, and this might be the start of that comeback. But Oliveira pushed back with the DPS of the Hydras. He needs to find more damage. He needs to actually get Shin out of this game, and it hasn't quite happened yet. No, he actually needs to end it. One of the rare times you really have to end it, but you're so all in. You have basically nothing left. Shin is rebuilding. I mean, look, look what he's building. Older Cavern, Hydrogen, Adrenal Glands. So much that is an army right now, but his current army is good enough. The Widow Mines going off right there. There's still Widow Mines trailed about everywhere. We actually lost a few links to those mines, so that's painful. Adrenal Glands will make a big difference as well if that is allowed to finish just in what is going to perhaps be scrappy fights. But as Oliveira is still producing a few marines in a tank, he's going to have one more consolidated push. And it's not like Shin's economy is online to the point right now yet with the lack of bases that he's just going to overwhelm it. Yeah, he, he might have. The, the natural still had some mining to do, so that would have been helpful. That wouldn't have gone down. But even the third and fourth base are run out of minerals. The would-be fifth only just now getting really online. That is going to be such a breath of relief, actually, as this gets injected in the Shin's economy. Economy, he's now going to feel more and more confident, which is absolutely uh, the correct case here. Like, Oliveira is desperate for the economy. Shin now having recovered his. He can afford all the upgrades, all the structures, and a couple of ultras. Oliveira purely dependent, really, on Marines to do the magic. And Marines are terrible against ultras, especially when they have all these upgrades. Shin with a little smile on his face as he seems to think that it's like, well, this should have never really gone to this point, but I mean, his supply is looking pretty darn good again with Ultra. It's going to be so much tough for Oliveira to push through, to break into that Zerg army. Even the Bailing that's coming back online, Adrenal Glance finishing. In a way, it's nice for Oliveira to slow down and stabilize and kind of set up some economy. In a way, it's given Shin all the same opportunities. Exactly. He really needs to be dropping like a madman at the same time yeah. and getting into the drone lines everywhere. Two here, four there, six there, canceled hatchery as well, but he's just not being able to do it. And sitting back, building up an army is not going to cut it when ultras have been added on. Now, this is before Kaiden is planning, so a little bit awkward. And that is a lot of Marines off of creep. They're going to try and hold the line. The first ultra goes down. The second one decides, you know what? I can't just stop these guys. I'm going to back away. They're backing away into more spellcasters, more reinforcements. Oliveira has one more tank back up and running. Another spread as well. Vipers blinding, clouding, trying to push away the help of that tank. And that is going to be it by the looks of things as Banelings also roll into the third base. Oliveira's supply just does not cut it. Oh, Shin took his hands off the keyboard for a second just to take a sigh of relief because Oliveira does not have enough and Shin is realizing that now as he's breaking through, knocking down the remains of the economy and these last few units will not be able to get there. The blinding clouds across all those Marines were so good as our last year's champion is looking to exit in the group stage. That is unfortunate news for Oliveira fans out there, but Shin is on an absolute tear when it comes to this matchup. Bunny, perhaps the only other uh, madman here, I suppose, able to take down Shin, right? Where the other Terrans maybe played a little more standard and Shin just was totally prepared for that. Shin really looking really, really good in Katowice's. We'll continue this year as Oliveira will not get a chance to try and lift that trophy once again. You can just see the disappointment right there. Yeah, he might not have thought he could go all the way, but out of groups, absolutely. This was a very doable group for him. He's played great TVT for a long time. Shin, I think he came in probably feeling confident against, but it's just all gone wrong. GG well played as called, and Shin, I believe, guarantees himself first place in the group.